This is video 25 uh, concerning our topics in quantum mechanics series. The playlist now for all the videos, you can find it at the website at digital-university.org. Okay, in the previous two videos, we were working with the new operators that we defined, A and A dagger. And also, I think it was in video number 23, we determined that the Hamiltonian of the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator takes on this expression. And then after that, we determine these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different relationships involving our new operators, A and its complex conjugate, A dagger. Now we want to use this information. So, what we have is for the one-dimensional quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator, where all it means is we have a particle moving, oscillating back and forth on the x-axis, that the Hamiltonian times an energy eigenstate is equal to just some constant times that energy eigenstate. It's just a typical um, eigenvector, eigenvalue type equation. With the Hamiltonian, all of its associated eigenvalues, they're not only real, but all of them are positive. And that's something that we haven't proven yet. We'll do that perhaps in a future video. What we want to consider first of all is what happens then when you have the Hamiltonian and it operates on the lowest possible eigenstate in the system? So that means then that this is the lowest possible eigenvalue or the lowest possible observable energy in the system. And now let's just do something very simple. Let's multiply both sides of this equation by the operator A. So we'll have A times the Hamiltonian times the eigenstate is equal to So we have this expression. Now, look at this. We have A times H. Now, it was in the last video, video number 24, where we determined that for this commutator, which is HA minus AH, that commutator is equal to minus h bar omega a, where h bar of course is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Well, that means now we can solve this for a h. So a h equals h a plus this term. So let's go ahead and substitute this for this up here. So now our equation becomes H A plus H bar omega A multiplied by the energy eigenstate equals and the right hand side of the equation doesn't change. Now what we want to do though is bring this term over to this side of the equation. So what we will have is this
is equal to, and on this side we bring this term over here, so now we're going to have E naught minus H bar omega A, this minus H bar omega. And what we'll do is we'll take the A out like this. So here we had A E naught times the eigenvector state right here. Then from here we bring this over, so we're going to have minus A H bar omega naught times the eigenstate. Now, the equation that we originally started off with was this. This was our original equation. So, two comments. Number one, when we operate both sides of this equation with our new operator A, that's this right here, notice that it lowers the energy value of the system. Also, what we should have pointed out before we discuss that is this is a new eigenvector. So this is the new eigenvalue and this eigenvalue is lower in energy than this eigenvalue. Well, this is supposed to be the lowest one. So for this equation here, the only solution it has is the trivial solution. This has to be zero. This is the lowest possible value we have. But if we had, say, this equation, where we have an eigenstate that is higher than the ground state and you operate on both sides of this with A, then that will lower the energy of the system with this same type of expression. So the operator A then is a energy lowering operator or sometimes it is called the annihilation operator. Now when we have it operating here with the ground state where this is the lowest possible value that exists, then yes, for this particular equation, it only has the trivial solution, so that means this has to be zero. So let's see if we can gain any information from that. So we have A I think we can do better with another pen. We have A here. This equals zero. That's the only way this particular equation can work. Well, let's multiply both sides of this by A dagger. So we have that. That's still going to be zero, of course. But now, remember, I think it was in video number 23, we established this relationship. A dagger A is equal to this. So let's write it down. A dagger A equals 1 over omega h bar times the Hamiltonian minus h bar omega divided by 2. So let's go over here and substitute this for a dagger a. So now we have 1 
over omega h bar times the Hamiltonian minus h bar omega over 2 times this equals 0. Now we can multiply both sides of the equation by this. And now from here we have this simple equation that the Hamiltonian is equal to h bar omega over 2 times this. Well, our original equation was, and this is to be h bar h, the Hamiltonian times this. Don't want to leave that out. So we have the Hamiltonian times this equals this. Well, our original equation was the Hamiltonian And this is the ground state now, the ground level eigenstate, and that was equal to this, its corresponding energy eigenvalue. So now what we have determined is that this is equal to this. So So, two things that we want to take home from this particular video. Number one, when, let's pretend this is just not the ground state. We have this equation, and this really is the Schrodinger equation form when you have a one-dimensional quantum mechanical oscillator. If you operate on both sides of this equation with the operator A, it lowers the energy of the system. You get a new, like we had here, you get a new eigenfunction, and the corresponding eigenvalue is lower than what you started with. Now, in this case here, when we're dealing with the ground state, this can't exist. This is the lowest level, so for this particular equation, the only solution that exists is the trivial solution. So that means this has to be zero, which we have right here. Multiply both sides of the equation by this, by a dagger. Substitute our relationship that we determined back in video 23 right here, and then we are easily able to determine what the lowest energy eigenvalue or the lowest energy eigenvalue for the system is corresponding to the ground state, the ground level eigenstate. Okay, that's all we want to say in this video. Now in the next video then we're going to consider what effect does this operator have on the system. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll continue our discussion with creation and annihilation operators.